Hi guys and welcome to another Bootstrap 4 tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. We're going to continue on with our Bootstrap Basics theme here. We created this simple site, we added a blue background and we just added this navbar yesterday. What we're going to do today is just style our navbar, change the background color. We're going to do a color, we'll do a gradient, and we'll do an image just to show you the different options here. So let's get started. I'm going to open my Brackets text editor. Brackets is a free text editor. You can download it from a link below this video if you don't have a text editor. If you do, any text editor will do. So we created this folder, and inside this folder, we created our index.html file which we're looking at here in our bracket software and also a custom CSS file for our custom styles and we've also got this open with brackets right here and as you can see there's nothing in it at the moment apart from that blue background that we uh, put in just there for demonstration and I'm pretty sure we're going to remove that okay now let's have a think what do we want to do today well, if we look back at our site here we put in this nav bar so first thing we want to do let's make it our own by giving it a background color at the moment it's a sort of light gray color so if we go back to our bracket software here's the body tags first thing in there is our nav bar you see the nav nav with brackets if you select an opening tag it'll show you the closing tag now what we can do if we look along here it's got some classes navbar navbar expand large navbar light and background light we can use one of these classes like background light and target it just to change the color if we want it throughout or we can add a new class of our own i'll just demonstrate that i'll take this class of bg light right here just going to copy that. I'm going to go to our custom CSS sheet. And if you don't have that open, if you have brackets, then just right click and open with brackets. Otherwise, just open with your text editor of choice. And this is what we've got here. Okay, so I'm going to start a new title here. I'm going to call it navbar. So I'm going to say forward slash star star forward slash backup and in between the two stars we can put our comment this way it comments it out and it won't be read as code there we go navbar decoration and it's not a bad idea to give your CSS titles like this at the moment we don't have much in there but we might have hundreds of styles of code and giving it a title will make it easier to find so let's think, what do we want to do with our navbar? Now I just copied that class. So all classes, when you're dealing with CSS, begin with a dot or a period, and the name of the class, which was background light. Then we have to open and close some curly brackets. And inside there is where we want to put our code. So let's say background. What we're going to do here is just change the color and we'll say oh, I'm just going to say red for argument's sake and if I do this now and refresh you probably won't see any change and I'll tell you why let's just do that save control s go back to the site and refresh and you see no change there and the reason for this is that it's already got a color assigned to this background light background which is a light gray here so we've got to tell it to override that so we need to use important after it so it'll be exclamation mark important if I spell it right there we go important there we go now if I save this control s go back to the site refresh this nav bar should now change color should change to that red color there we go simple as that so that how you change your your color on the nav bar there 
Now, what I was saying before, you can take their class that they've already got, or we can give it a class of our own, which is useful, especially if you want to have different color menu backgrounds on different pages. For instance, you might want a transparent one on the front if you've got a good hero image or something, and then a colored one on the interior pages. So let's go back to our index HTML. And after background light, let's put in our own name, own class, doesn't matter what you call it, I'm going to call it my nav for simplicity, M-Y-N-A-V. Now if we save that, control S, go back to our CSS, change this class to my nav, and it should do exactly the same thing. Let's change that to blue, or let's change it to green because the background's blue, isn't it? It's going to look pretty ugly, but what the heck. Okay, let's save that. Control S. Go back to the site. Now when I refresh, this should turn green. There it is, and it's turned green. And how pretty is that? <laughs> but uh, that, just to show you what I say about using your own class, or you can overwrite their class, it's fine. Okay, so that's how to put a, a color in the background there. What if we want to put... Uh, a gradient in there. If you want a gradient, you've got to say background image. Let's just take that bit away. Background. And I'll put this HTML below, or this I'll put this CSS below. So you've got it. Okay, background image. And then we want to say linear gradient, which means it's going to be a line gradient linear dash gradient it prompts us right here but we just got to put two little round brackets in there I just click on that it'll do it or you just type them in now in there you want to put your two colors and uh, for arguments sake let's put in red and yellow and you can put hexadecimals in there you can put RGBA colors in there anything you want Put a little colon on the end there in case we want to add some more. Let's save this. Control S. I'm actually missing. Make sure I got my closing curly bracket on there. So I'm missing that. So let's put that one on there. There we go. Now save that. Control S. Back to the site. Now when I refresh, this should have a red and yellow gradient behind it. There we go, as you can see it's got a red and yellow gradient. If you want to change the direction from up and down to left to right, we can just say, just before the first color there, we'll say to right, put a little comma after that, save it, now let's check out our site. There we go, it's now going from left to right and of course you can change that to left if you want it the other way around if you want to add another color simply put a, a comma behind there the last color and add your new color green and don't put a comma after the last color just in the in-between ones save that control s back to the site there we go you now got a red yellow and green one course it works for the linear up and down as well change the direction just put left in there like I say I'll put the CSS below so you can use it if you wish so don't worry about squinting and copying what I got on the screen here save that back and when we ch the direction should have changed it should start with green and end with red now there we go other way around so that's how to do a color, how to do a gradient. I guess the next thing we want to do is do an image. So let me find an image. At the moment, I've not got any images in here. I'm just going to put a little image straight in our root folder here. Later on, when we start using more images, I'll probably create a folder called IMG or something. But for the moment, I'm just going to put it in the root folder. So let me just go find an image. Okay, I found a couple of images and I'm just going to paste them in here. Let's change this so you can actually see them. 
Now one of them is quite a big image. In fact, it's a very big image that I'd probably reduce it if I was making a live site. And one of them is a pretty small image, which is 20 by 20 pixels. I'm going to start off with our big image. And a big image called, called background one, and it's a JPEG, as you can see, item type, JPEG, JPEG. So we'll start by putting that one in. Let's go to our custom CSS. And we can leave background image because that's what we've got there. But we have to tell it where this image is. So we're going to say URL and open and close some round brackets. It's prompted us down below again, which is great. Inside, you just have to tell it where the image is. Now it's in the same folder as our CSS, so I, all I need to do is put the image in there. Same folder, there's our custom CSS. So I just need to put the, the name, which is BG1, and the type of file that it is, which is JPEG. BG1 and it's actually found it there so I'm just going to click on that if not I would have just typed dot jpeg afterwards and let's have a look see what that's done now control s to save let's go back to our site now when I refresh there should be a background image behind there there we go and let's put that background image in there and of course we can't see the writing so we we'd have to restyle everything and I probably wouldn't use that image anyway but this is for example now that's with a big image by default it aligns it top left you can change the alignment of your image by changing the background position so if we go back to our background image here just underneath it will put a another line we'll say background position dash and brackets will probably prompt you right here so I can just put that in right there and you can say bottom center left right bottom center left bottom so let's say uh, left bottom shall we and build bottom so that line it with the bottom left of the image and a little colon of semicolon afterwards in case we want to add some more code Control S to save back to the site now I refresh this should push this up so the bottom of the image is visible right here there we go and it's changed it that believe me that is the bottom of the image right there okay and I've done another little image called background 2 or BG2 now the reason I've done this is just to show you the repeat feature or the repeat function I should say so let's put that one in instead let's go back to our CSS delete that last line the positioning one that we had in there and I'm going to change that to background too so it's in there and when I do this you're going to notice something I'll show you I'll tell you what's going on control s now remember this image that I put in is only 20 pixels by 20 pixels and when you roll over it with the brackets it should show you the preview of it and it does right there. It's only 20 by 20 which is really small. It's only about this big. So let's save that. Go back to our site and now see what happens when I refresh. Okay, well, let's put that image in but not only is it put it in once it's put it in it's repeating it it's repeating it horizontally and it's repeating it ver vertically now if we didn't want it to repeat like that we could tell it not to repeat by going to our CSS drop down a line and we'll say background repeat and it's prompted us again and I'm going to say no repeat, no dash repeat. Save that, control S, back to our site. Refresh, see what happens. There we go. And you just got one little image in the top left hand side there, which is 
not particularly what we want. Now the other option is to stretch this thing so it actually covers the whole of the background. This one little image. Now if you've got low res images it's probably not a good idea but this may work. Let's see, let's just do it. So if you wanted to stretch that we could say background size colon and we'll say cover it says auto contain cover we're going to use cover and it should fill the whole area or cover the whole area control s to save back to the site refresh there we go and that image has actually covered that whole area and even though it's a little 20 pixel by 20 pixel shape it's actually done quite a good job of it and that's purely because it's just a color had it been in like an image of somebody's face or a hand or something it would be very blurry being blown up like this so there you have it there's some options for you <laughs> um, and I'm gonna make this real easy because I'm gonna go back and I simply want mine to be white background so I'll just put this background white in there Put hexadecimal save that and back to the site refresh there we go white background just what I wanted but I thought I'd show you those gradients and images just to give you some options in case you wanted to change yours around so I hope you found that useful and enjoyed it if you have please give it a thumbs up share subscribe to the channel and comment if you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free web development courses down there, as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesigntechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.